let us identify a simple program where we are going to use functions and then we are going to extend the program not just displaying the results but for, to check whether a given number is palindrome. Now basically when I say that I am supposed to use functions as usual, we are going to have processing part outside. So what I will do is in my main I will read a number say read n. Now when I say palindrome what exactly mean by palindrome? We have done this already in while loop. If you remember a number is said to be palindrome if the number and the reverse of the number are same. For example, 121. When I reverse that 121, it is going to be again 121 itself. 111. When I reverse that, it will be 111. If I have 523, the reverse of this is 325, which means that it is not a palindrome number. You should accept a number and you should say whether the number is palindrome or not. So for that, what I need to do is I need to first find the reverse of the number. So for that, let me give a function call as reverse say n. So this will go outside and give a call to a function called as reverse. Let me say int n. Now what this function does is this function uses a while loop because I am supposed to synthesize that number. I am supposed to bisect that particular number and take that number into pieces and this number has to be reversed. So the reverse has to be taken back to the main and in my main I am supposed to compare the reverse with the number that is n. If reverse matches with n, then I will say the number as palindrome. If the reverse does not match with n, then we say number is not a palindrome. Simple task to do. We will not be writing a function called as palindrome, but I will be writing a function called as reverse, where the reverse of the number is going to be obtained. Let us see the code in this particular program. So, part of the program has been written for you. Some instructions I am going to add up. So, I will ask the user to read a number, that is enter a number and read that into n. Now here, you will find a function call at this place. I am going to give a call to a function by name reverse that takes n and gives it to functions. So however, you can have actual argument and formal argument with same name but with different memory locations. So in this, if n is modified, will it affect the n? No. The reverse, let that particular reverse be stored into r. So here I have two variables n and r which is going to be used for later comparison. Let me take an example for this. So let me take n. n is what? 121. Assume that the user enters 121. From this, your r is declared but doesn't have any value. n is copied on to one more n at this place. Take a variable as remainder as rem, rev as rev, set rem, rev as 0 and n is 121. Now observe this, while 121 greater than 0, yes 121 is greater than 0, true, true in the sense do this operation, reminder is n mod 10. We already seen that whenever we want to take out separate separate digits, then the number has to be divided and modded by 10 continuously. So 121 mod 10 is 1, 121 by 10 is 12. Now the variable n which exists in a function gets modified but will not affect the variable n of the main. So 12 and here this is 1. So it says rev equals to rev into 0 into 10 that is 0 plus rem that is 1. So rev is 1. Again go back. n is it greater than 0? True. 12 is greater than 0. So 12 more 10 is 2. 12 by 10 is 1. Rev equals to rev into that is 1 into 10 that is 10 plus remainder 2. 1 into 10 that is 10 plus 2 is 12. Go back. 1 greater than 0? True. 1 more 10 is 1, 1 by 10 is 0, integer by integer is integer, hence 1 by 10 never set as 0.1, it is 0, 12 rev multiplied by 10, 12 into 10 is 120 plus rem that is, okay, this return rev, rev is what? 121, where this 121 has to be returned? This 121 has to be returned to R, so this 121 goes back to R at this place and after that, all the variables which have been declared in the function are going to be destroyed. So n, reminder, rem and reverse rev are destroyed. When all these variables are destroyed, you will find that the reverse is r. And here I will compare, is my reverse that is r, is it matching with n? Yes, 121 is same as 121. So it means that the number is palindrome. Else the number is not palindrome. If you take some other example, you will find that the reverse does not match with n. Hence we conclude that the number n 
at this place it doesn't get modified. If you remember the program which we did in while, there the value of n was copied at some place and then the copied value was compared. But here there is no necessity of any comparison. Why there is no necessity of any comparison? Because the variable is modified in a function which will not affect the main code. Hence n of function doesn't get modified with n of your main program. Let's conclude that this program doesn't modify the value of n even though in both the function as well as in main I have used variable n. If you remember as I stated in a while loop we copied the value and then the copied value is compared but here we will not copy the value because the variable which is going to be modified is in function and the variable which exists in main is altogether a separate variable. So when main goes to function the function variable might get modified it will not affect the value of main. Hence we conclude that this program can directly use the variables which have been accepted from the user for the comparison without making a copy of that using these functions. Thank you.